Well, good evening and welcome to the August 2nd, 2022 meeting of the Penfield Conservation Board. I'm Jim Olmsted, and with us tonight we have Paul Sugnett. Um, we have uh, <coughs> Roseanne Cohen. Uh, we have Daniel Moore. We have um, Pat Schickler. And we have Jeff Bartocci. And with us this evening from town staff, we have Doug Sangster filling in for Catherine. And thank you for being here with us, Doug. No problem. So our uh, first order of business would be approval of minutes. Uh, did anyone have any observations on the minutes that might need correction? I have one. Okay. The, just the next meeting, it says July 12th, and it was notes from the July 12th meeting. So. Oh, yep. It should be August 2nd. Change that. Oh. Yeah, that would be something. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be here tonight, would yeah. we? Yes, that's <laughs> good. confused. Um, yeah. Anybody else find anything that needs correction? <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> Hmm. Well, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. And hearing no objections, uh, we'll give our thanks to the town staff who works hard to prepare these for us each month. <clears throat> so we have um, first item for discussion tonight is uh, uh, what we see to be the uh, path toward uh, Tree City, USA. And um, any observations on that? Well, we have our meeting Thursday, right? I believe that's the case. Yes. And yep. uh, I, I confirmed it yeah. with Mark to Valentine this morning. So that's going to um, be right here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. OK, so <laughs> we will begin our discussions with town staff on what they see to be possible, and uh, we'll continue to keep the board updated on our progress. Is Bert going to be joining you on that? Uh, Bert is at the Cape uh, right now, oh, so okay. uh, we'll do the first meeting without him, but we'll keep him up to date as we go, and uh, he'll certainly be with us for future meetings. By any chance, would more members of the conservation board be able to join uh, the group in order? To, because since we all started this uh, tree uh, code, so it would, because uh, Pat and I were talking earlier, and we feel that it would be like a good idea to have like all members talk about with the tree. Code. Well, all all members will be <laughs> will be talking about it, <clears throat> but. Um, our intent was to keep the uh, the group very small at first to uh, work with town staff to see what they feel is possible, and then uh, bring our bring our thoughts back to the council. Okay. Well, if you, um, I would propose I could certainly see having a smaller group meeting with town staff to see what they think and what's possible. Sure. That, but before you begin drafting or putting into words anything to bring it back and do it as a work session. That's what we did last time. And I think all of us were looking forward to having discussions about what would go, you know, what would go in this rather than select persons. I mean, I've been on groups where bylaws for an organization, which we all know that is a very complicated process, were done by bigger groups than what we have here. We are a small group. So that's what I'm proposing is, you know, sure, meet with town staff, get their feedback, bring it back to us, and let us all talk about what we want. You, this should make you happy, Jim, because we all have a really <laughs> vested interest in, in seeing this through. Yeah. 
and I'd like to get it done this year. So I think yeah. that we should. We yeah. should. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, let us uh, <clears throat> let us continue to bring back <clears throat> what we're able to work out with town staff as to the possibilities, and then we'll have a full board discussion. Okay. So. But do you see where I'm saying the difference is At, just? Yeah, that okay. was always the intent. Okay, yeah. not to yeah. formulate, formulate all the policy this is, this is and the words. This is just to understand what yeah. we need to do, what we can do, what needs to be in there, what doesn't need to be in there. Then bring it back to the group and talk through it. Okay, that's exactly yep. all I was looking for. I yep. stated that, and I thought Jim was trying yeah. to say something other than that. So that's. I that's don't fine. think so. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> so fall guest speaker is next on our list. Um, where are we on, on that? Did I make it the memo on that one? So if confirmed, Mark Valentine will be at the September meeting um, as a guest. I believe that was one of the discussion points at the last meeting um, is that Mark will be um, able to come and speak to the board about stormwater and the town's MS4 program. I'm, I'm sorry, Doug, you said he's... My over 65-year-old brain includes <laughs> over 65-year-old ears, so you said what? <laughs> um, uh, just confirming that Mark will be attending in September. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Which do, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, well, that's great. And then we, uh, we had agreed to have a board work session on August 9th. That's exactly a week from today. And um, so we're going to do that here, um, but we won't be on TV. And just to explain again to those who might be watching tonight, uh, we're not trying to exclude anybody. You're welcome to come and attend in person and watch us struggle with what our mission statement is going to evolve to be. But um, it might not be pretty television, so we thought we would do it as a work session and uh, rather than have it uh, televised. So again, if you if you want to be here with us in person on August 9th, feel free, but that uh, don't look for us on TV that night. Yes. Is that at 7, just like the other meeting? Uh, I guess that was our intent. Uh, does anybody have any other remembrances? <laughs> I, I, I was we, assuming we'd do it at 7, uh, but... I believe we have the auditorium booked from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Would you rather, as a group, would you rather move it up to an earlier time, or is 7 still good? 7's good for me. Do 6, uh, order pizza. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to make it gluten-free. Yeah. yeah. But that would give us more time if we sure. did. That way we don't have to rush. I mean, if we get out early, we get out early, but if we come in earlier... That's fine. I can, I, can, I can live with that. I remember like everybody here is... What about you, Daniel? I can definitely do that. I remember it being, well, there was discussion that we were going to do it at Dolomite Lodge, or are we just doing it at the Lodge well, here? The, the, the truth is, I guess, that Dolomite Lodge is very popular this time of year. Right. It's booked pretty solidly through October yeah. until you get to about October. All right. Oh. I'm okay with 6 o'clock here. I just have to... Roseanne? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, nobody has a problem with six? No. My guess would be, is Catherine going to be with us, uh, Doug, on, on that date, do you think? Uh, I believe so. Or, you know, maybe she doesn't need to be. I mean, it's just a work session, but it'd be nice to have somebody who could actually take notes. I'm certainly not good at that. <laughs> uh, no, we'll, we'll have staff present yeah. uh, okay, for that, and we'll provide additional resources as we can. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, maybe um, you probably have them. I don't, well, I don't see one in here now, but a flip chart or something in case we want to capture. Uh, yeah, I believe we have some through, somewhere. Uh, I know I have an like easel that. somewhere for one of those a, in my office. Whiteboard, back whiteboard back. anyways. Yeah. Yeah, having I, been through this a number of times, the easels with paper and pen, large pen, <laughs> uh, works pretty well. So, and, and we ought to have at least two easels with pads. I can also and, bring and my laptop pen. <laughs> right. Well, I, I can look at that. We could also, there is a lot, we do have a large whiteboard and whiteboard markers, so I could bring those yeah. forward as well. Mm, yeah, I guess we could do a whiteboard. Uh, the nice thing about the pads and easels is you can rip that all down and 
take yeah. it with you and for no note typing yeah. and absolutely. So I, I think the the pads would be a better choice. They would be my vote too, not to you know put down technology, yeah. but like Jim said, it's you know very helpful to. Then when you're on to the next thing, somebody doesn't have to copy it all down real fast so, because you're going to erase it to reuse. Okay, I'll take a look at getting a couple of those. And I do want to say that the um, the last minutes, besides that we did already set the agenda for that work session, these minutes are a good framework for going back to. It's like, oh, yeah, we said all that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jim? Yeah. Could we go back to the fall guest speaker? Because, sure. Because I think what we were saying was that Mark was going to come in September. Right. And Catherine sent out the list that we had for a future mm -hmm. right. fall speaker. So we should probably talk to that. Okay. Um, who who I, after Mark? I didn't bring that list with me. Um, so neither did I. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up on my phone. I missed that email. But it was pretty short. <laughs> yeah, it was. Maybe oh, Doug yeah. can pull it up. She did send that out, I think, yeah, almost right. a week oh, ago yeah. or so. It was, with the, it was at the same time as these. As the, yeah. She sent out the agenda. Yeah. And the, it was in, so, I mean, Adam Zareski was on it. Yeah. Mm. The ladder and fly discussion was on it. I have just mm. a well, since we are talking about it, and since you mentioned that name, uh, having Bruce Zaretsky here would probably be at the top of my list. That's where I was going. Yeah. So if we can do that for like November, because I'm going to miss October. Everybody okay with uh, moving Bruce Zaretsky up to the top of our list? It yes, would I mean, be. Let me just, I'm just opening the speaker. Yes, it's very short. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get this so it's readable. Oh, and Bruce Zaretsky's on it. Jennifer Michelle, Nine Ways Towns Benefit from Native Plants, and Mark Valentine, who we've already got. And uh, let's see, Kelly Emmerich, Invasive Species Stormwater Program and or Storm Stormwater Coalition, Backyard Conservation, and Jury Kushner, but he has a charge. So, um, yeah, I mean, if everybody would like Bruce next, unless you think that um, Kelly Emmerich would follow because of more stormwater talk and backyard conservation, and just in terms of topics sort of following along. My but recollection. I'm okay either way. My recollection is that we had hoped we might include Kelly with uh, with Mark uh, the same same evening. I, I don't know if that's. A possibility, but uh, could you check into that? Uh, I'll check into Doug? that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think you know they they might work well together in that discussion. Mm -hmm. That's um, why I was gonna. That would be my only thing is yeah. as a back to back. Right. If they can't be together, then. But since uh, Bruce would be highly relevant to our effort to become a tree city. Okay. Uh, I. I'd really like sure. to get Bruce in before the end of the year. So That's great. Uh, maybe if we that could plan great. on a November date for, for Bruce. Yes. And Doug, could you take the action item of having a conversation with Bruce to see if he'd be available? Yes, I can do that. And I guess we're reasonably flexible. If he can't do it in November, we could go one month either way. But it would okay. be nice to uh, get them in before the end of the year. So while we're at that, we're going to need to have conversations with him also about the uh, pollinator garden and sure. some of the things we're doing. So do we want to do this at the same time? If, since we're getting, if we're getting into October or November, um, we might want to hit him up for that there so we don't have to drag him back here again unless he really wants to come back and see us. Okay. And Pat and I will get together and... Um, We'll come up with something uh, that we need to run by him. And Jeff, I'm glad that you mentioned pollinators because um, I made an error in our last meeting. I said that uh, I was opposed to goldenrod because it was one of my big allergens. 
And I was <laughs> reminded that uh, <laughs> it's really ragweed that's uh, my big allergen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, when I was a kid and I lived on a, on a farm as a very young child, um, we had goldenrod and I think my mother thought that that was an allergen, and uh, so I have thought that ever since. You know, whatever mom taught me when I was five <laughs> has stuck with me, <laughs> fortunately. Sometimes unfortunately. For the good or the yeah, bad, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, mom is always right, so. So I apologize for misleading people about goldenrod. All right, so I'll, I'll just have to take that hour that I came up with that list to uh, go back and redo it now and put it back on the list. Yeah, I think it off. probably belongs on the on the list of good pollinators. So uh, on the topic of pollinator, to continue with that is, uh, I, if I may, um, I spoke to Megan today, and you know, the last we left off is that they were working with town staff to select a spot for a pollinator garden. And they, um, they mean Megan and the group she's working with um, have identified a space. She said it's either 15 by 20 or 30. It is at the uh, Penfield Library slash Community Center. And it's, um, there's a roundabout there. And um, I believe near the vicinity of the roundabout is uh, before the parking lot. Oh. Are we getting to see this? This is wonderful. There's supposed to be a strip of grass. And she said it was also something about the bike racks. Can you blow that up a little more where the bike racks are? I'm not sure uh, which is where. Is that it right there? Maybe it's this. Oops. Sorry, I'm just I'm going to go to Google Maps because it'll there. be a little easier to It'll be a little easier to see. So I'm wondering if it could be that long strip there that looked, that looked like it could be like a 15 by 20 or 15 by 30, that strip in there, and that they were going to write that up and um, present that to the ta Sabrina, Sabrina and um, make that as a suggestion for a pollinator garden. So if that is the case, I think we got to talk with her because uh, I don't believe that's a good place. For one thing, snow's going to get piled up there. Second, there's going to be a lot of salt from the sidewalk and the street getting in there. That's, I, I, I would hope that that's not where they're talking about. It's right there. Maybe it's behind there. Maybe it's like behind those benches or something. Yeah, maybe. Oh, behind, I, you yeah, mean behind I, the I benches? Not, nice. I am not sure because I didn't have this okay. picture when she was trying to explain it. So Okay, so if it's... So maybe it's that one because she said people okay, would sure. be walking by it to get into. So show me, show that other spot again, the one behind the benches. Behind the benches. It's. You can see over here. Okay, all over there. Okay, well, depending on where it goes, there's still going to be sidewalk plowing and yeah. plows and salt so, going on the grass. You can see where the salt's already damaged the grass in this picture. So maybe they'll have to, yeah. yeah, so I'm not exactly sure which, and I'm sure she'll be watching tonight, so she'll hopefully be able to say, no, it was this other one. Okay, no. okay, well, we can check. But um, in any case, because that is uh, a point about the salt, we try to plant some sort of uh, garden outside of social services, and any perennials we put in there, the salt, you know, for the sidewalk, not so much the sidewalk plow, but the salt they were putting down killed everything. But anyways... Um, they thought that would be getting the most visibility and traveling um, along it because they already have several presentations planned there and they said it certainly would be then they can just take a trip outside, of course depending on time of year. So I would um, hope that we could those of us that wanted to partner as a conservation board with them to have yeah everybody um, working together on this. And for Jeff and I, it would be a learning experience for when we look to something you know, future. So I'm kind of psyched about this because I was doing some research um, and reading last week and the uh, monarch butterfly is about that far from the extinction list. So 
No, it's a little thing, but I love monarchs. Mm -hmm. and their numbers are decreasing and decreasing. And so when we, um, when we um, do our session next week, I know we had talked about long range and short range goals and um, you know, could figure out where this pollinator guard, maybe the first step is the other piece working with uh, this one that's already being planned. But uh, Jeff and I were also talking about, could we take a look at what our timeline, do we have time tonight to take a look at what should our timeline be for um, the um, vote on the native or the um, town flower? Yeah, we could probably get to that on other business. You think, and Jim, or do you want to address we, it? We can go right to that if you'd like. Okay. All right. Well, um, so we need a, we need to propose it, then a vote. And you know, yes. So we'll come up with a proposal. We, how, how long is the town, and or what do you guys think as far as uh, putting the um, flowers out out for a vote? What kind of time frame do we need to get a vote out? Um, I would have to talk with uh, either Mark or Carrie, who are more familiar with. Because uh, that'll be our goal. We'd like to have it. Um, I'd like to in unveil it at the uh, probably at the Arbor Day event. So. Um, and we were talking about somehow getting seeds and getting some plugs going so that yeah, we could yep. hand, hand them out. So we'd almost be a little saying solemn. that's the end goal. So work back from that because yeah, how long does it take to get seeds and plant and get them reasonably started? And that's when you'd have to, you know, and the, the vote of the town flower this yeah, way and then the hype vote, for the, the Arbor Day Festival too. I'd, I'd have to take a look at it. Uh, truthfully, I think Arbor Day 23, which is end of April 23, could be realistic. We could incorporate um, a uh, celebration of the flower or whatever it is. What do you all think of this idea? If we have um, if we have our planned celebration for 2023 in and around Arbor, Arbor Day, um, maybe we could have half a dozen prime candidates for the town flower that maybe would come out of discussions with this board and let people vote on that day if we had pictures so people know what they're looking at i say we do both it'll give them well no because you actually you can only have one vote <laughs> <laughs> no but what i'm no what i'm saying is i was thinking if we if we have the flower we can have a celebration of that flower like maybe a whole uh, tent um the, his, the flower, the history of the flower, give some of the flowers away, uh, explain the whole pollination process, and it, it would be kind of partnering with the pollinator, so maybe we could work with... Uh, Color Penfield Green. Yes. We could do a joint thing with it with the community and celebrate the flower that we choose, and then maybe plant some and give some away. How will people know what they're voting for? We're going to we're going to let the community vote, right? That the idea? Yeah. Okay. So how will they know what they're voting for? It would we're, be That's going to be up to um, It would be the same way that we did yeah, the, the tree. Yeah, same way votes. we did the tree. We'll how give did them we do that? four options and then they they put it out there. It was in the Penfield um, It was quite publicized. Yeah, was they did a great job publicizing it. Does anybody's so memory extend back to ways to vote? Bef I, I don't know. I'm sure there must be an online way to vote. Maybe there's a submitting. Uh, yeah, how did we do it with call. the tree? I don't know if it was, were you here back then, Doug? I wasn't here. That was I don't oh, think he was here. Okay. Well, let me throw this out. Um, it's springtime. It's uh, maybe a little early for the flowers to really be in bloom. Um, but you could at least have big pictures of the flowers in bloom that are candidates right. and let people actually cast their vote on that day, that Arbor Day celebration. Another thing but that you go ahead, Daniel. Uh, another thing that we could do along aside that is put it on social media because I know for a fact that my generation probably wouldn't want to go out just to put something in a ballot box and so if you put it on like Facebook if the town has an Instagram or mm -hmm. Twitter then people could easily just be like this is the one I want as well with in person as well 
because you would be if you if uh, because you would want to expand it to others than those that come to the event because you are deselecting a majority of the town if you limit it. To, so I don't think you're saying that to limit it to that. So you would still need other ways for people to vote, and it would just be a picture and a little write-up of the flower. You know, uh, they'd click on it. Well, here's a picture of the flower. Here's the stuff about it. And uh, then finally vote, you know, vote so that, because th this way you can get as much of the town as possible and it becomes not just the people that are apt to attend, as Daniel said, apt to attend this event, but getting others interested as well. Got that. I think, I think the other thing would be that if we get people interested in a vote, it's it, along the line here, it hopefully in May um, increase the traffic to our to our Arbor Day event because it'll it'll be out there. We can make sure we have a blurb there that says, "Come out to Arbor Day," and we'll reveal the we'll reveal the winner at Arbor Day. Um, and get a free just, flower. Just my, just my thought on it. You know, it's a mm -hmm. more advertising. May is also final season for a lot of college students, and so that's. I wouldn't discourage what you're saying because I suggest that because I'm. I'm personally going to be here for college, but if we want to expand it to everyone, uh, it's easier for a lot of people to click a button so as well. I think, <laughs> I think what Jim is suggesting, I like what he's suggesting, <clears throat> to make it part of the event, have pictures of the four or five choices, and what you're saying is open it up to people that don't can't make it, absolutely. Yeah. So it could be both pronged, and that'll be the final day of the votes. They can vote online up, and then we can put the pictures on, online so those people can vote online. The only thing uh, that however. that does is it precludes us trying to get some specimens of that and giving them away and on that's the fine. day of the event. That's fine. This is part of the event. And, and to Jim's point, maybe it's the next year we have them, they're in and people can see them. Or mm. maybe they're in that summer and they can see them, but I don't see them being blooming by that time either. No, it would be a plug of a plant, and they did give away yeah. plants that come. And that could be the final, the, the next year. This is one part of it. I like the idea of the public participation, the voting on that day, and let other people that aren't going to participate in person, absolutely. And then we could do a handout the next year. And for all the youngsters here who are very computer literate, we want to remember that people approaching my age, a large percentage of those folks are not especially attuned to the computer. So we want to give them another way to vote. And of course, in person is a way. But they could always mail a card in to the town and cast their vote by mail. Um, yeah, we'll send them to Doug. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could, I mean, I get your point relative to let's roll it out. I mean, you could have the vote the, the month before, but then you're, in, I, I like it as part of the celebration, the voting. Well, why don't we continue that discussion at our next meeting and see if we can come up with a decision at yeah, that let's, time. Uh, let's yeah, let's look at some background yeah. to, I mean, maybe our idea of giving plugs away wouldn't be doable anyways, yeah. which would mean doesn't matter when you vote that day or vote a different day and see if we can get some other uh, fee feedback in on that. And uh, sure, that's a good idea, Jim. Okay. So let's see, uh, we're going to review ongoing projects. Can you do that for us, Doug? Yes. Uh, so let's see, since your last meeting, I think what came in. Um, so we've only got, we've gotten a couple new applications. Um, one I was going through uh, with some of the board members here prior to uh, the the meeting. Um, let's pull it up here. Uh, if any of you have driven out East Penfield recently, you may have seen one of our town signs at Bricolo. Um, they're coming in for a resubdivision. Um, so the farm market 
nursery is up here. They own some residual, about 40 residual acres um, directly next to it. Uh, they're looking to sell a portion of it to their neighbor here at 2771, who will extend their lot, as well as creating a new lot at the very back to be accessed through Parenton off of Furman Heights Road. So they'll be extending 2771 and creating a new lot um, here. Uh, relatively sub simple subdivision, uh, not proposing any structures or new homes, um, any building. Uh, would just be the creation of a new lot. With the intent to build eventually? I, I don't know if their intent is to build eventually. Um, when they initially talked to us, they were interested in merging the property together. Um, generally, it's not, we can't do that because the town boundary runs between them. Um, so they're, they would have two separate tax IDs. Um, so they're looking at a, a separate lot. Um, within Penfield, but they initially had talked with us about uh, their desire to merge it into their existing property. Um, so I believe their intention is to purchase it um, essentially as future buffer if development comes in um, on adjacent properties, they would have at least some buffer um, from any future building. In all likelihood, they're like they'll likely hold on to it and it may be a buildable lot and it'll likely be a buildable lot in the future. Um, so if they ever change their mind or look to sell it off, it could be sold as developable um, in coordination with the town of Parenton, since access and utilities would likely be coming through the town of Parenton. Okay. So that one is up here in August. It's our only public hearing for August. Administratively, Delta Sonics made an application uh, for their Penfield Road location. They're um, pulling out some asphalt, replacing it with concrete at the end of the dryer lane, um, and they'll be installing a trench drain to help catch some of the water that comes off of vehicles before they enter onto Penfield Road. Um, it's a small. Where is that exactly? Across from Home Depot. Yep, uh, across from Home Depot, off of Penfield Road, down here. So you can see water washes onto the road there. Um, and what are they going to do to stop that? So they're looking oh. to pull out and they're going to widen out this area of concrete and um, relay out the drying stations. And then um, it's hard to see in the, the picture here, but this is a slight incline up to here and they're looking to do a trench drain. So as vehicles are exiting, the trench drain will help catch some of the water instead of it. Um, dripping out onto Penfield Road. The, the hope was that the, the trench drain will catch some of the water. Well, that's kind of vehicle. silly because most of that is coming from the back of pickup trucks. And, and the hope <laughs> is as they, as they, as they come, as they come up, cause there is a slight lip up here that it, it, it comes out the back of the bed will be caught by the trench drain, which will take it to their stormwater treatment facility. So is a trench drain that you drive over a grid or something? Yep. That's yep. in the, okay. And so that would maybe jiggle the car a little bit. <laughs> Put in a speed bump. <laughs> there you go. So it'll look, look something solved. like that. <laughs> look something like that. Okay. <laughs> but so uh, a would, bit larger. <laughs> would the business be paying for all of this? Yes, yeah. They, they're making the application. Um, it's an admin application because of the size, relatively small nature. They're pulling out and replacing existing pavement, which um, generally doesn't need to come for review before us. So it's considered um, standard property maintenance. Um, they're only coming to us because they're doing some engineering work for the trench drain. Um, it's being reviewed and approved internally by staff as an administrative okay. application. Okay. Um, the big one is, um, you know, I think we've, we've discussed the arbors at Penfield um, in the past. It's the mixed use development um, between Atlantic Avenue and Penfield Center Road here on Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Uh, phase one and their preliminary overall was recently approved by the planning board. Um, they have now made application for the remaining phases of the mixed use development. Uh, they're looking to do instead of phasing it out um, through four additional phases um, to do the remaining as one phase or phase two. So that'll be before the planning board in September. 
Okay. <clears throat> so is that about it? Um, and then last one um, over off of Sweets Corners Road. Um, and this will be in September. Um, the Arbors will also be in September. This next one will be in September as well. Um, 1755 Sweets Corners Road um, at the intersection of Sweets Corners and Gloria was recently sold. The owner wants to come in, subdivide off uh, five lots and build three new homes on the, uh, between the five lots. So. Where is that? Is that out your way? Yeah, that's Sweets Corners and Gloria? Yep, <gasps> so southeast corner. More, more neighbors, more exciting. Neighbors. <laughs> so how many acres overall? Uh, 54. And we're gonna subdivide into five parcels? Correct. That's so okay. plans for only three homes? Three homes. So it'll be subdivided into five lots here. Lot two, which is just under three acres. They're proposing to do a house facing Sweets Corners Road. Lot five, which is at the corner of Sweets Corners and Gloria, which is right at three acres. They're proposing to do a home, uh, I believe coming off of Gloria Drive. And then lot four, which is 13 acres. They're proposing to do a home off of Gloria. And that leaves what, uh, with no plans for development? Um, it would be lots one and three between the two of them, 21 and 14, 35 acres. Do you know why they're not suggesting how, I mean, is there something special about those pieces? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, there may be, and, and I haven't discussed this with the applicant, they may be looking to sell them off to neighbors who are interested, because originally, um, I know there had been some discussion when this property came up for sale, um, that some of the neighbors in the area were interested in uh, seeing if they could pool money together and purchase it, um, and mm -hmm. then divvy it up between each other. So there may be um, some potential that lots three and lots one may be purchased by neighboring properties. So they would be neighboring properties off of other yep. roads or? Yeah, I don't know if it's the property owners to the west or the north. Okay. So, so this looks, but that's, oh, spe sorry. that's speculation on my part. That's I don't, okay. We're not gonna I don't know what there. And, and this <laughs> comes before the planning board when? In September. In September. So this is this bottom piece here. So it doesn't like yeah, it doesn't was look it a like farm. It doesn't look like there's it doesn't look like there's anything vegetation. there. It's all farm. Nope, it it's farm. all it's okay. it's all currently. I, I don't believe it's actively being farmed right now. I believe they're ag leases. Oh, there's up. there's they're they're growing some kind of melon. <laughs> I drive right by that? every all the time. What'd you say, Paul? I think they had corn or melons. Oh. Oh, I don't know. I'm confused which corner it is. Well, as you go past court, then you go up on this rise, and there's a farmhouse, and it's all around that farmhouse. It's that lot, a lot that's just sitting that's by this itself. Lot here. See that lot right there? That's a farm. That's a just a farmhouse, and all around it is farmland. So this is it. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It was yeah. okay. It's so interesting that one section is treed. Yes, there's a there's a lot in between here that but is. But they're not planning on building there. No, this is another That's parcel owned property. by somebody else. Oh, there's yep, a this farm. is there's a farm house with okay. a barn. And, yeah. Okay. Mikoskis. Yeah, I don't know what they're growing there now. Okay. Um, so what's being developed here or proposed for subdivision here rather is virtually without trees. Yeah. Correct. correct. Yes. Does anyone see any reason why we need to? See this? No, no. Oh, they're big parcels too. My goodness. Yeah. There is a creek that runs across the property, but they're not looking to. So you know, it's hard to see here. Um, the the center line of the stream is pretty far away from the homes. Well, does the DEC get a chance to at least uh, take a look at that? Uh, uh, we did submit it for county development committee mm -hmm. review. Um, theoretically, it could be sent to the DEC by them, but they are without, they're outside of any, within, they're without the, even the check zone of any regulated federal wetlands yeah. or state wetlands. Um, so it's unlikely that we'll receive comments from the DEC. Okay. There's so always I, a lot of deer at that corner. Whenever I drive by at night, there's always deer hanging out there. 
Have you named them or? No, <laughs> no. but there's always. No, no names. If it's dark out, there's So there's always. more coming to your house yard now once no. they start building there? <laughs> Don't come to my house. No. So I believe lot four will be for the applicants and lots five and two. I don't know if they're planning to sell those off or. or so does the applicant live in that house that you said is there, the farmhouse? No, uh, they currently live elsewhere in Penfield. Okay. Okay. Well, we're um, approaching the end. Does anyone have something they'd like to bring to the attention of the board? Could I just circle back to the monarch because you mentioned the butterfly and at last meeting we mentioned something about the monarch, monarch butterfly challenge. Do you know anything about that, Doug? I mean, we had kind of abandoned that. Uh, there wasn't I am, enough time frame. I am not familiar with that. Anybody remember? We, the mayor's monarch pledge? That's it. Okay. I am I mean, not familiar with it, just but to, I can just always Just while Google we're working it. on everything else to see if it fits in conjunction with any of the other things that we're already doing. So that if we're, um, you know, already doing something that can count for more than one thing. Well, if we had a village, we could have a mayor. Well, that's true. Yeah, but we, but, have, but a we have a town supervisor. A supervisor can we do the supervisor butterfly su supervisor's challenge? Supervisor's challenge, right. <laughs> So was there just to say to, to look into it yeah. for next to see what okay. yeah. so, so well, we we'll, have the specifics so that we're you know, we'll, we'll take a deeper look at it in conjunction with other things that we're working on that we don't overlook the opportunity to make good use of our time. Do we or do critters fall under the realm of the uh, conservation board? Uh, what's that? Critters? What critter? Any kind of critter. Monarch butterflies. Oh. Well, you know, it's interesting Deer. that you ask about critters because, you know, our probably our single biggest thing that we've championed over the past many years has been trees. We haven't talked a lot about animals. And that's why I'm asking yeah. now that I'm talking about butterflies, yeah. you know, what other, is it part of our mission or is that something we can adjust when we do our mission? I think that's something we could talk about in our work session. But uh, Paul, I see you <laughs> declining, declining Not to be, chance. declining Not to be involved chance. with the animals. <laughs> no, I was, I was just asking. We open up animals. Pandora's box. No, we don't want to touch. Jim, one time when we were out um, along Linden, remember we were trying to spot this one species of plant that if we spotted it, then we'd say, "Oh, you can't build here." Is that my imagination? Some kind of an orchid or a? I truly don't remember that. That one. Okay, yeah. maybe it was a different. Yeah. Maybe it was a bird. I don't know. Okay. But it was, okay. Is there a difference between birds and plants? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It was birds are the modern day dinosaurs, anyway, right? Yes, this is true. We were looking for some sort of something. I don't. We'll, we'll only have to ask Bird if he remembers. Well, you know, everything is going to change if the monarch goes on the extinction list. Like what? All kinds of protections. Yeah. Yeah, we see him all the time. Uh, what's that, Roseanne? <laughs> we see him. We see him all the time. The monarch. You probably have a lot of milkweed pad in your yard. Probably. If you do, that's where they're going to be. I um, accidentally have a pollinator garden. I well, I say accidentally because I didn't know I was doing it, but I have all <laughs> sorts of cone flowers and I have little orange. Um, Orchid type flowers and the hummingbirds, the butterflies, and the bees um, are all over that stuff. And I just planted it because it looked nice. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I did a good thing. <laughs> I really try hard to pollinate because I've got a great crop of dandelions. And <laughs> 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 so I, I contribute. I think my family used to eat those. Yeah, my I would motion to, to adjourn. Dandelion wine. <laughs> Dandelion wine. Yes. Yes, uh, sir. Let's see. Old dogs and children, and dandelion wine. There's a song about that. 
Oh boy. So could we move to adjourn? <laughs> You'd like I'll to make dad. a motion to I'll adjourn? I'll second that. Uh, cool. You're, you're anxious to get home to reruns no, of I Everybody think Loves Raymond? I discussion we could have after. Yes, for sure. once we close off. Well, we have, we're a fun-loving group, right? We are. And uh, we thank you all for being with us tonight. I've heard a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. Yeah, second. And no objections. So, uh, Ryan, you'll let us know when we're off the TV. And we welcome, wish you all well.